The Mobile County Public Schools presents Homeroom. Hi, and welcome to Homeroom, where we introduce you to the educators and the students who make Mobile County Public Schools the best school system in the nation. I'm your host, Renee Phillips, and today we're going to talk about the arts. The arts play an important role in the education of our students from elementary through high school. And so joining me now, I have Joel Stevens from Murphy High School and Dr. Susan Henderson from Barton Academy for Advanced World Studies. So hello. Hey, good, good morning. morning. <laughs> <laughs> so the arts, how important are the arts? for students? Oh, it's very viable. Um, without the arts, you don't have a fully developed student that can excel across, across curriculum. Uh, I guess it's the best way to put it. Yeah, I would agree definitely. Arts, no matter what form, you know, performing arts, visual arts, I think they're all really important for student development. Mm -hmm. I think it helps with that confidence too, because I've gotten to see both students from both of your schools Absolutely. perform yes. right. and, and to get in front of people like that. Right, and it gets both sides of the brains working simultaneous because you got to think they're reading music, counting, so they're doing math, and they're uh, having to be musically literate with maybe a foreign language, and mm -hmm. they're doing it all in a time, so it gets both uh, parts of the brain working. Right, and then with instruments, you know, they're pushing down valves or manipulating keys, whatever, in addition to all that other stuff. So there's a lot of things happening at one time, so that requires a lot of coordination and, and development from our kids, so it's really beneficial for them. Yeah, and so you're in the middle school, so for some of them it may be their first time to pick up an instrument, right? Yes. So what's that like? <laughs> Um, so in the beginning, sixth grade, uh, you know, it's just figuring out how the instruments work, how to make a good foundational sound, and then it's really rewarding to see them grow as they, you know, spend years practicing these instruments, and then by the time they get to their senior year of high school, you know, we have kids that sound amazing, and, you know, it's, it's just those years of practice and, and working on perfecting their skill. And do you do the tryouts where they can come in and see if they're better for a trumpet or a clarinet? Yes, or? we do. Um, we call it like instrument placement. And um, so that's something that happens before they start in their sixth grade year. Okay. And you do band, choir, and? And we do exploratory music uh -huh. in sixth grade. So the kids get one quarter where they get to just kind of see what music is all about and learn about composers and instruments and different music types and the science of music, all that good stuff. So they can kind of test it out and see what they like yeah. and what they're good at. And then Joel, by the time you get them, uh, you yes. do wonderful things at Murphy. Well, we take uh, from the exploration into actually coming in and focusing on one craft and developing it across the performing arts. So a singer and a dancer or a, uh, an actor, like uh, we did spoken word where they portray it in dance as the actor speaks the poem and stuff. So it, it actually takes it from exploring to actually utilizing it throughout the entire collaborative performing arts. And such a wide variety of what they do from the dance and the ballet and then to the acapella. Um, mm -hmm. I love seeing the hallelujah yes, th yes. Th that they did for some of our events. So what's it like for you to, to bring this out in the students and to figure out what they like and what they're good at? Well, first off, it's really scary because you get up in front of them and you're like, I promise you, if, we, if you just trust me and we try and we are diligent and we rehearse, um, this will happen and they look at you like you're crazy but then it clicks and when it clicks then sky's the limit you can just kind of mold it and make it any artistic experience that you want it to be. So do you get reluctant students then who are like oh, yeah. oh I'm just here because my <laughs> schedule makes me be here. And that then, does actually happen a lot. Uh -huh. and yeah. You get kids that are put in your class and they're not really interested and they look at you kind of like this isn't really my thing, but then those are sometimes the most rewarding students when they figure yeah. out that, oh, I do actually have talent, uh -huh. I just didn't know. And so right. sometimes that's really a really cool thing. Yeah, that's what I was, exactly what I was thinking because those could actually be like the most rewarding kids to teach because if you have somebody interested, you don't have to convince them, but you have somebody that's like, oh, I wasn't supposed to be in here. You can take them and say, hey, uh, this is, um, the art of singing or the art of playing an instrument and watch them grow, you know. Yeah. Can you teach anyone to sing or is there talent or not and maybe you steer them towards an instrument? 
I think well. anybody can get better. <laughs> That's a good anybody can get better. I love that because yeah. I cannot sing. Like my kids have said, stop, mom. But yeah, so they can get better. Yes, there is always room for improvement. How do you get better? Just practice. Practice, 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 practice. 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 Try new strategies, techniques. Just uh -huh. like, you know, if you're teaching math and a kid's not getting it this way, well then present it in a, you know, frame it a different way. And sometimes that works. Yeah, have your bag of tricks. Because every student is different, uh -huh. so you You're just pull. Yeah. Yes, yeah. exactly. <laughs> so you just pull out whatever technique until it clicks, uh -huh. and then you go from there. Because some, I'm always amazed, Joel, when we see your students because they do many different types of music, and there's a difference in like the the singing and the performing and the the almost like Glee. Some of your stuff is like the TV show Glee. I might yeah. be aging myself by even naming mm -hmm. that show right now. Yeah. But so is that neat to draw that out of them? Just the not just being able to sing, but to be able to perform and have that almost a acting. Right, type. acting. Yeah. And it also builds that confidence and self-awareness uh, as they go out into the world and mm -hmm. They know how to present themselves and they're aware of all the cultures that make up, you know, humanity. You yeah. Know? So um, it's, it's really neat being able to start that process with them. Yeah. And Susan, you started from scratch at Barton. I did, so yes. So what's that like to, to grow, to, to start it and grow it? Well, last year was a little scary because I couldn't recruit or anything. And as a magnet school, there's not a whole lot of recruiting that goes into it anyway. Mm -hmm. So I just sort of got what I got. And it was really a building year last year and establishing a program. And we've increased our participation across all of our ensembles this year um, significantly. So we're looking forward to to just keep building and growing and, and reaching more kids. And what types of productions have you done? Um, well, we do our uh, winter concert and then our spring concert. Last year, the band and the choir traveled to Panama City to perform. And then we have kids that participate in the honor bands and choirs, both at the middle school and our ninth graders do the high school level mm -hmm. events. So that's something that's great about Mobo County. There are so many performance opportunities I ran into Joel, yeah, yeah. <laughs> on Saturday we uh, performed at the Oakley House for their mm -hmm. Candlelight Christmas. Yeah. So lots of opportunities. Yeah, and community mm -hmm. events. And Joel, you just did your winter program. Yes. I know you help us with our Learning Leading Awards right. every year. What are you up to for next semester? Oh, uh, Hairspray the Musical. Ooh. So. <laughs> how, how does that happen? So you have auditions first? Yes, ma'am. Uh, we audition a campus wide uh -huh. and then we get the pool of talent in and we're like, okay, this pool of talent would best match this musical. Uh -huh. So that's how we choose the musical. Oh, so the musical is based on right. strengths. We do uh, okay. a cattle call and then we do callbacks to actually let them audition for uh, specific roles and characters. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we do a uh, second round of callbacks to actually pick the lead roles and then it's a year-long process that they go through. So have they started practicing yet? They or? have. Oh. They started back in November. Okay, so it's intense. Lots it of hours. It is intense. Good. Hours. Well, we look forward to seeing Hairspray and to all that Barton's going to do as you grow throughout the years. We're, we're excited about the arts opportunities in our school. So thanks to both of you for what you do. We have to break for commercial. When we come back, we're going to hear about some more of our arts programs in Mobile County Public Schools. So stay tuned for Homeroom. Thank you. You're welcome. Ayla, hi. Oh, hi, Sierra. How are you? Good. How are things? Things couldn't be better. What do you mean? Well, I just started this new job as a school teacher with the Mobile County Public Schools, and it has been a life changer. Great benefits, the hours are great, and great students. Just so overall, it's a great opportunity. Oh, wow. That sounds great. Yeah. I'm going to look into that. You should. For more information, visit mcpss.com slash job opportunities. There's a lot to like about Mobile County Public Schools. What I enjoy about Mobile County School is the extra attention my teachers give us to help us learn. Teachers are liking their access to technology and students are liking the quality of their education. I like the technology that's been incorporated into my education. And since 1826, you have trusted us to prepare your child for their future and we like that. Mobile County Public Schools, we are learning today, leading tomorrow. When parents are involved in school, you get more of this and less of this.
Hi and welcome back to Homeroom. Today we're learning about some of the arts opportunities that our students have in Mobile County Public Schools. And joining me is Maggie Pope and you're the dance instructor at Dunbar School for Performing and Creative Arts. Yes. And you have an interesting story. So tell us, how did you get into dancing? You're kind of a late Yes, late I was a late it. bloomer. So I actually went to Dunbar Magnet School. Um, I was really interested in theater and so my parents thought that was the perfect place for me. And it turned out it was because then I chose um, dance as an elective when I was a s in seventh or eighth grade. Mm -hmm. um, the dance teacher there really encouraged me and I've just never stopped dancing ever since. So Dunbar really gave me my um, start to dancing and so it's become a full complete circle on how I get to be there as a teacher now. Um, after Dunbar, I went on to um, participate in Davidson High School's dance program with Angie G. Soy, and then I went and got my dance education degree at the University of Southern Mississippi. So Dunbar really has a special place in my heart um, as a student and as a teacher. And now. now you're there. Mm -hmm. And that's the perfect example of kind of why we do the things that we do in the school system, which is to, to foster that talent mm -hmm. and to, to make Absolutely. people appreciate it. Or just pull it out of somebody who didn't yeah. even know it was there. Yeah, to introduce them and, mm -hmm. and, and to go with it. And so you danced at Dunbar and then you went on to Davidson. I want to mention that because Ms. Um, Desui has mm -hmm. a great program there. Absolutely. And what was that like to go there and, and, and dance under her? Um, Ms. Desui or Ms. D is what we, what we like to call her. She gave us a really um, great example of learning the arts as um, you know the technique but then also the history of it um, and that's what a lot of people um, forget about dance education is that it's the education of the history and um, dance filmmaking and how to choreograph and how to dance so there's so many dance topics within just how to do ballet and how to do modern and how to do jazz um, that she gave us and that education is what really hooked me into dancing. Um, yes, it's fun to do all the styles, but learning about who um, Isadora Duncan is and how ballet um, has evolved and all those types of topics are what's really interesting to me and what really wanted me to pursue dance education into um, college. And they have such a great track record at Davidson. Mm -hmm. I know recently they've had two students go to Juilliard, mm -hmm. and that's pretty neat because I think only, what, 12 or 24 people get selected per right. year and Absolutely. have two from Mobile County Public Schools. And then it's just so cool because then that connection is established, and Reggie Turner, which is one of those students, mm -hmm. came to Dunbar this year to teach our students, and that was just really cool because um, he taught class, and then we had a Q&A afterwards, and our students got to learn all about um, a fresh student at Juilliard, and um, I know my students were really excited, and it was really beneficial to hear that, so it's really fun how our dance uh, community is so small mm -hmm. um, that we can all still be connected and share, and, and it's really, really cool. That is great. Mm -hmm. And so tell us what you do at Dunbar. What type of dance are you teaching? Yeah, so at Dunbar we have um, th uh, four main levels. We have uh, beginner dance and then we move into intermediate dance too. We have our Revolution Dance Company and then our Fusion Dance Company. And at Dunbar we start in dance one. We go over your basic vocabulary of modern um, ballet and jazz, as well as we focus in on the elements of dance. So how to create and how to choreograph um, using all of those terms. And then when you get to dance two, you get a little bit more intermediate mix in there. We're still covering that modern ballet jazz world, but we're adding in a little bit of contemporary and a little bit of hip hop and a little mm -hmm. bit more um, different genres of dance. And then at our revolution and fusion level, which is our two selected groups that they have to audition for in May, um, so that they get selected, they get selected based on their talent, but also their grades and behavior standings in the school, because um, they serve as ambassadors, right? They serve as um, leaders, and they get to go out in the community and perform. So those are going to be our performance level groups that get to go. Um, for example, Revolution, we performed at the Art Walk on, mm -hmm. in October. We did a little bit of a thriller um, Halloween um, set of routines, and then... That's a fun one. I got to come out and see was, when you guys was, did the, the thriller. The crowd was uh, exciting, and um, it gives them you know, how to perform in local settings. And then our um, fusion dance group, they performed recently at uh, Christmas Jubilee. Mm -hmm. um, and so that was also as fun as well. So our advanced and intermediate special groups, they get to do more of the performance outreach programs and things like that in the, in the community. And, and do you get a lot of dancers who have a lot of experience, or do you also have some like you who come in not really knowing what to expect right. and then um, excel? At, a, at our dance one level, there's a lot of um, 
newness and, and not really sure, you know, their knowledge of dance might be what they've seen on TV or what they've seen on TikTok, you know, mm -hmm. we get a lot of that. And then um, that's when the education comes in and, and talking about ballet and modern and jazz and all that. And we get to the dance two level, um, they've either gone through our program at the beginner level or they've uh, taken it a studio or they may have taken dance before stopped and now they're back so but we have majority of our students are at a beginner level so you don't have to have all that experience you can come to Dunbar and learn it mm -hmm. so we have some video yes. that I want to show our viewers of some of your students dancing um, and I think it was that tell us what they're doing here yeah so this is um, our modern uh, contemporary piece on the fusion dance company this was called haunted clock it's a, um, this is our fusion dance company performing at our winter showcase last week our winter showcase features our uh, dance to our revolution and fusion dance company we also had a special guest appearance by the old shell road dance co uh, company and so this is it how long does it take to prepare for a performance like this? We have, we started prepping, um, this group started prepping actually in uh, July. Um, they had a summer workshop where they learned some of their choreography, and um, but some of the newer choreography that they performed this dance, for example, we started this back in November. Um, so we take about a month or a month and a half of prep um, time. So this is modern dance. This is our mo yeah. This is a, a, an example of modern dance. Or it's a little bit more on the contemporary side, mm -hmm. um, but yes, modern. So what kind of dancing do your students like the most? They love jazz. Yeah. They love jazz, um, just because they can have a little bit more of their personality shine through. Um, this year, I've had an increase of. Uh, so, for example, here's one of our jazz pieces. This is actually um, a guest choreographer came in in July to set this on this group. Um, his name is Derek Williams. He was also a formal te former teacher at Dunbar. He also was a former uh, member of the Davidson Dance Program um, and a, f a former friend of mine from Southern Miss. So that was our jazz um, piece from that same show. Um, but yeah, they really love jazz. But I've had an increase of interest in modern. Um, mm -hmm. So that's exciting because modern might be one of my favorites. So. so would you encourage any person who's interested in dance or the arts to apply to Dunbar and to go to Dunbar? Absolutely. Even if it's like you're interested in art, um, the arts of music or of theater, because like I said, you may not know you have a hidden talent of yeah. dancing. And so um, it's just Dunbar is such an amazing place to come and explore all the arts because we do. We have um, we have visual arts, musical, uh, we have theater, we have strings and band and choir. Um, we even have AV Tech, so our students can learn the behind the scenes of mm -hmm. how um, they do the morning announcements every day via um, uh, broadcasts and things like that. So Dunbar is such a fabulous place to learn about everything and anything when it comes to the performing arts. And such a fantastic opportunity, especially for our middle school, middle school students. Yes, because so you get to just learn. You get to go here and there, and you don't have to necessarily stick to just one track um, right away as a sixth grader, right? You can kind of explore and dabble in all these different arts. And then by your seventh grade year, you can find one that really fits with you and continue working on that through our, um, throughout your time at Dunbar. That's awesome. So thank you for what you're doing at Dunbar. We have to break for commercial, but when we come back, we're going to learn about some more of our arts programs in Mendel County Public Schools. So stay tuned for Homeroom. High school students, are you looking for a way to become a better leader? Then the Junior Officers Training Corps may be what you're seeking. If you would like to develop self-reliance, learn ways to be more responsible, and improve your communication skills, you can do that and more when you register for the Junior Officers Training Corps. The JROTC program is available to all high school students in Mobile County. JROTC, we build a better you. Mobile County Public Schools, the place that has it all. We have 90 schools that include rural, urban, and suburban schools of various sizes. We are also home to Alabama's first public school. We welcome you to come join our winning team. Our district is led by the 2020 Superintendent of the Year, Mr. Kressel D. Threadgill. Our teachers are leaders in their profession who are afforded numerous professional development opportunities. Our principals are collaborators and encouragers our schools are leading in innovation and instruction. And most importantly, 
our students who are learning today, leading tomorrow, are simply the best. If you want to live in a historically rich city near beautiful beaches with superb southern hospitality, we invite you to come teach with the best Team MCPSS. Hi, and welcome back to Homeroom. Today we're learning about our arts programs that we offer for our students. And joining me, I have Eric Brown and Japonica Brown. And you're from LaFleur and Baker. And you have some interesting stories, I think, because Baker has lo long been a great school for theater, which is what you do. And then Japonica, you're growing the program at LaFleur. Yes. So tell us your journey, because it's an interesting story. You're a LaFleur graduate, and you just came back for the revitalization. Yes, um, thank you for having me. I really appreciate yeah. it. I'm excited to be here. I am a um, 2004 graduate of John L. LaFleur Magnet High School. Mm -hmm. And um, I just recently moved back to Mobile. Um, this is home for me. And so it was just a really gratifying moment in my life to come back to my um, high school and build a program that I feel is vital to the community there. Mm -hmm. Because the arts are so important. Eric, wouldn't you agree to that? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> and how long have you been at Baker? So I have been at Baker for 12 years, but I've been teaching here in Mobile County for 17. Mm -hmm. So this is year 17. And you do the theater program there. So tell yes. us what types of programs do you do? Yeah, so we've really, really grown. Um, you know, musical theater is probably our most popular. We have, I have 55 students in musical theater wow. this year. Um, but we also just got a new technical theater class. Um, we also have acting for camera. Um, so it's uh, really exciting as far as, you know, lots of just different options for kids. It's not just mm -hmm. one general theater program, but they really can, can dig in and get specific. Because the behind the scenes is very important. I always notice that when I see a play or a musical, the, the setup, the, the technical parts. Right, yeah. And that's something that, you know, a lot of our students just really um, they have an interest in that. Mm -hmm. They excel at that type of, of work. And, uh, you know, actually at, at Trumbauer, at State Trumbauer, we did really well in, in both lighting and sound design. So. We have some video. Tell us what they're doing here. So, okay, yeah, so that's, um, this is actually part of our light board training. Um, we've also been working with Joe Jefferson players, and so some of our technicians are actually going to JJP mm -hmm. and um, shadowing some of the technicians there or actually running the uh, performances. Um, this is from our production of Aida a few years ago and Jungle Book. So you can kind of see there, um, you know, how these technical elements are playing into production. Because mm -hmm. um, it really does, it, it takes a village to put on a play, right? Absolutely. <laughs> so how many students typically are involved in a production on the stage and behind the scenes? Uh, it depends on the year. Uh, mm -hmm. For example, the Godspell year, that was our COVID year where we performed at the park. So. Mm -hmm. Um, we had about 15, but traditionally for Baker, it's anywhere from 50 to 80. I think we had 80 for Aida. Mm -hmm. um, the wonderful thing about theater is it's, it's a collaborative art. Mm -hmm. um, and so whereas we are, you know, definitely performance based, you're looking at it's not just performers. It's also uh, visual artists. It's musicians. Um, you know, it's, it's choreographers and dancers. So... Um, so really, it's wonderful because it has something to offer mm -hmm. all of our students, no matter what their interests are and where yes. their talent lies. Because arts really do bring us all together. Oh, fan yeah, <laughs> absolutely. And Japonica, tell us about LaFleur. You said you just finished a big Grinch production. Yes, so we are going to have every year uh, what I call the, the LaFleur Fa -la, 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 la Holiday Festival. Uh -huh. And so this was our first annual year. We did How the Grinch Stole Christmas. Mm -hmm. And um, as I told the audience there, um, it's December now, but it's been Christmas since August at LaFleur. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, we had about between 75 to 80 students to perform in that show. And it was a collaborative show. Um, as you stated, it is a collaborative effort. Um, and we all performed, all the arts performed, the dance department, the chorus, the band and theater arts in one show. So it was amazing. Yeah, and tell us about Trumbauer. I think we have a video, but tell us first before we show that about, this was your first time to go to Trumbauer. So yes, this was my first time personally, but this was the first time for LaFleur to participate in the Trumbauer Festival in well over a decade. Mm -hmm. um, and so we had several students 
participate on the district level and was rated superior or excellent, but we had one uh, duet team to make it to the state, uh -huh. and um, they went to the state and placed second in their category. Wow, so for the first time, that's really, I really know. good. I'm very so excited and proud of them. We have some video of that, so let's watch it. Hey, Tim, there you are. Jeez, Louise. Wow, it's been so long since I've been up here. Dylan, what is the matter with you? You totally freaked me out, and I nearly fell off the edge. You put. Yeah, okay. Quinn is here and waiting. We're all going to the beach, and you're coming. Yeah, I don't think so. I'm a bit preoccupied because I'm about to jump off the edge. You're more likely to fall than jump because you're the one that has no sense of balance. Don't you remember the day when you walked on stage at school? You missed the first step, fell flat on your face, rolled off the front of the stage, and landed right in the lap of... Will you shut up? You're making me nervous. Why are you even up there? Get away from the edge. I'm having a bad day. Aren't we all? That's why we're headed to the beach. You don't have to make it sound like some kind of a joke. Oh, don't give me all the credit. You're doing fine all on your own. Why can't you take me seriously? <laughs> You're about to jump off of a tree fort that's three feet off the ground. You couldn't hurt yourself if you tried unless you dove head first. And even then, the lawn hasn't been mowed all summer. You probably disappear into the thick of it, get disoriented, and die of starvation. Which reminds me, Remember to bring some money because we're all going to pitch in for pizza at Beachside Restaurant. Do you want to hear or not? Not really, but you're going to tell me anyways. No, I'm not. In fact, I don't have to tell you. And when I jump, people will ask you why, and you'll have no idea. And okay, okay, that. tell me. I want to know. I sense a bit of sarcasm. No one ever died from a bit of sarcasm or jumping from their childhood treehouse. Do you want to hear or not? Please proceed quickly. The car is running. Lindsay and I broke up. What? Yeah, I know. It's kind of hard to believe, isn't it? Lindsay and you? Yeah. You're gay? What? No, how could you even say that? So who's the Lindsay chick? Lindsay is a guy. So you're about to take a leap because you broke up with a guy with a girl's name? It's a gender neutral name. Yeah, okay. What do I have to do to convince you to come so we can go? Nothing, just go without me. I won't be any fun anyway. That's what I tried to tell them. And they said if Peyton doesn't come, then we canceled the whole beach trip. Can you please bring your disappointed self so we can overcome ours? So that's great. I know you're going to continue to do great things at LaFleur. Now, Baker has a long tradition of doing well at these state competitions. So how does it make you feel as a fellow educator to see your colleague and see the growth of the arts throughout Mobile County? Oh, I'm so, I'm so happy <laughs> and, uh, and just to see like I said, our theater departments, especially continuing to, to grow. Um, it's just, it's, it's been great, especially having, I said, I was, when I first started was 17 years ago and mm -hmm. it was, we had maybe three programs that were active. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, we just keep great opportunities. getting better and better. So tell us what's Baker doing this spring? SpongeBob the musical. Ah, yeah. interesting. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be it's, a lot it's of fun. good, right? Oh yeah! Oh, it's okay. fantastic. Okay. I think even if you don't <laughs> I'm like skeptical the, of the SpongeBob. even if you don't like the TV show, I think you'll love the musical. <laughs> so come and be amazed. <laughs> Losing the pineapple under the sea. Yes. Yeah. And, and, and Lafleur, what are you working on? Um, we are currently in rehearsal for Black History. It's uh -huh. the Me I See, the journey of Black identity. So it's going to be a collaborative show again uh -huh. with chorus, band, and theater and dance. So very excited about that. Yay! So we look forward to seeing those productions. That's all the time that we have. Thank y'all for what you do with our. Our students, you're phenomenal, both of you, um, and we'll see you guys next time on Homeroom.